Let's speak to the uh, UKIP leader, Gerard Batten. He's in our Westminster studio. Uh, Mr Batten, good evening. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, how likely is it that you will want to stand in the European elections and field candidates for UKIP? Well, we've thought that this is going to happen for months, so we've been preparing for months because I've always, you know, I've predicted every stage of this uh, for the last couple of years of where we were going to be. Reluctantly, uh, we knew it was going to be betrayed and reluctantly we've had to prepare for European elections. So we've already, we've gone through about 190 candidates uh, in a selection process. We've whittled that down to 73. We've selected our candidates. We, they now just have to be positioned on the list. Um, and we'll be doing that within the next few days. So we're ready to go, we're raising the money, uh, we've had a campaign planned, so we intend to fight that election on a platform of unilateral, unconditional withdrawal, no compromise, no surrender, and we are going to represent the 17.4 million people who voted to leave, and a lot more now, I think, have come round to that point of view. Well, some polls suggest the opposite, but as, as we know, polls can tell us different things depending on what we ask. But you talk about betrayal. The, the Prime Minister has said, though, she's doing all she can to get the UK out of the EU with a deal as fast as possible. So you might not be it might not be necessary to stand in these elections. Why would you, you bother if we're likely to come out sooner rather than later? Well, I've had to prepare it with my responsibility because we can't suddenly find we're in the European election and we've made no preparation, so we're ready to go. Um, I, I, it's difficult to see how anything's going to happen now because Parliament has consistently voted against any deal, and I didn't like the deals anyway, but they voted against them. They voted against no deal. And now Mrs May, in her inimitable style, has gone and handed the ball back to the European Union and said, basically, um, if there's no um, further uh, agreement reached in Parliament, then we'll have to go forward into the European elections. And, of course, what the European Union wants is, although it, I'm sure it doesn't want a lot of UKIP MEPs back, but it would rather have UKIP MEPs back in the Parliament rather than have the UK out of the European Union. So I think that's just something they're prepared to live with. What so should, I think it's... Nine what should, view, what should voters make of your choice to, to share a platform with Stephen Yaxley Lennon, who likes to be known as Tommy Robinson, for whom, his, for, his, for a lot of people, his views on race, immigration and, and Islam are re repellent? I've got any views on race because uh, Tommy Robinson, if you... Why don't you have Tommy Robinson on one of your programmes and ask him his real points of view? We had a rally last week which was basically sponsored by Tommy Robinson and his news service, Tommy Robinson News, which we wouldn't have been able to hold otherwise because we couldn't have spared the money to pay for it. Uh, you make these accusations about Tommy Robinson, which I'm rather tired of, to be honest, because I think if you want to call him names... If you want to call him names, why don't you have him on your programme and ask him the questions? It's describing some of the things he says on the platforms that he at times has shared with you, and it's also looking at some of the, the way he uses social media he is offensive. Well, he's never said anything racist. I wouldn't be on a platform with him if he had. He talks about Islamic ideology and he's helped to write a book about that. And that is fair enough to have a critique of an ideology. That doesn't make somebody a bad person or justify the names that he gets called. And as I've said, all these people that keep asking me about Tommy Robinson, why don't you have him on your show and ask him yourself? Well, it's perfectly legitimate to ask you about Tommy Robinson or Stephen Yaxley Lennon, as his real name is, because you choose to appear in public with him and I've I have chosen. just been before I before I decided to interview before we you, you this interview took place I went back and looked at some of the reports about him I went back and looked at some of his his tweets they are so offensive that I wouldn't read them out on television well I've been on platforms with Labour MPs Conservative MPs people of all kinds over the years and I don't go into every detail of what they may or may not have said in the they're past not, But they're not but, but the, Labour MPs and Conservative MPs and all the people that you name Haven't got his track record have they um, and, and the kind of language that he uses about people from Pakistan about people who are Muslim is not the kind of language that you well, get from no. those other people that you're talking about. It's not a fair comparison. Well, you're now saying things, but you're not prepared to read out what the tweets are. No, I haven't read all of his offensive. tweets. I haven't read all... Well, that's your opinion. I don't know what they're saying because I haven't seen them. I've met but Tommy a few times. Isn't that worrying? That, have... that a leader of a party that wants to have people elected to the, to the European Parliament, if the elections go ahead, is prepared to share a platform with someone who is widely reported to hold these views and yet yes. you don't bother looking at them widely, yourself. Widely reported by people like you who won't interview him yourself.
Because he, sh because he has extreme views which have to be handled so with you're, care. You're the censor now that says uh, you have, people have views which you don't approve of, so therefore you don't have to interview them. No, uh, it's but, not. It, so, so I get this on every programme I go on. Basically policy. what you are, you represent a Remainer organisation of the media, and the easiest way to have a go at what I represent is to bring him in and talk about him when you won't talk, about, talk to him personally yourself. Many people believe the BBC to, 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 to um, be more on the leave side of the campaign. We seem to upset people um, on both sides. Um, the, our head of editorial policy makes the decision about whether we interview people like Tommy Robinson, not me. Uh, how many seats do you think you'll get if these elections go ahead? Well, we came top of the poll last time with 24 seats. Since we are the authentic party of Brexit and we will be standing for a, an absolute clean exit from the European Union, then I would expect to do very well. I never make predictions about what we do. I've been leader of this party for 13 months. Um, I under-promise and over-deliver, and that is the way I intend to go on. Gerald Batten, thank you very much.